It is your soul's only desire to turn its greatest concept about itself into its grandest experience. Until concept becomes experience, all there is is speculation. I have been speculating about myself for a long time, longer than you and I could collectively remember, longer than the age of the universe times the age of the universe. You see, then, how young and how new is my experience of myself. In the beginning, that which is, is all there was, and there was nothing else. Yet all that is could not know itself, because all that is, is all there was, and there was nothing else. And so all that is, was not. For in the absence of something else, all that is, is not. This is the great is, not is, to which mystics have referred from the beginning of time. Now all that is knew it was all there was, but this was not enough, for it could only know its utter magnificence conceptually, not experientially. Yet the experience of itself is that for which it longed. For it wanted to know what it felt like to be so magnificent. Still, this was impossible because the very term magnificent is a relative term. All that is could not know what it felt like to be magnificent unless that which is not magnificent showed up. In the absence of that which is not, that which is, is not. The one thing that all that is knew is that there was nothing else. And so it could and would never know itself from a reference point outside of itself. Such a point did not exist. Only one reference point existed. And that was the single place within the is not is, the am not am. Still, the all of everything chose to know itself experientially. This energy, this pure, unseen, unheard, unobserved, and therefore unknown by anyone else energy, chose to experience itself as the utter magnificence it was. In order to do this, it realized it would have to use a reference point within. It reasoned quite correctly that any portion of itself would have to be less than the whole. And that if it thus simply divided itself into portions, each portion being less than the whole could look back on the rest of itself and see magnificence. And so all that is divided itself in one glorious moment. That which is this and that which is that. For the first time, this and that existed quite apart from each other. And still both existed simultaneously, as did all that was neither. Thus, three elements suddenly existed. That which is here, that which is there, and that which is neither here nor there, but which must exist for here and there to exist. It is the nothing which holds the everything. It is the non-space which holds the space. It is the all which holds the parts. But I am all things, seen and unseen, so this description of me as the no thing or the space between is only the half of it. God is all that is and all that is not. From the no thing thus sprang the everything. As the elements of all raced forth, time was created. For a thing was first here, then it was there and the period it took to get from here to there was measurable. Just as the parts of itself which are seen began to define themselves, 
relative to each other. So too did the parts which are unseen. God knew that for love to exist and to know itself as pure love, its exact opposite had to exist as well. So God voluntarily created the great polarity. The absolute opposite of love, everything that love is not, what is now called fear. In the moment fear existed, love could exist as a thing that you could be experienced. In rendering the universe as a divided version of itself, God produced from pure energy all that now exists, both seen and unseen. Not only the physical universe was created, but the metaphysical universe as well. The part of God which forms the second half of the am-not-am equation also exploded into an infinite number of smaller units. These energy units you would call souls. My divine purpose in dividing me was to create sufficient parts of me so that I could know myself experientially. There is only one way for the Creator to know itself experientially as the Creator, and that is to create. And so I gave to each of the countless parts of me the same power to create which I have as the whole. My purpose in creating you, my spiritual offspring, was for me to know myself as God. I have no way to do that save through you. My purpose for you is that you should know yourself as me. This seems amazingly simple, yet it becomes very complex, because there is only one way for you to know yourself as me, and that is for you to first know yourself as not me. There is one way I could have caused all of my spiritual children to know themselves as part of me, and that was to simply to tell them, and this I did. But you see, it was not enough for the spirit to simply know itself as God, or part of God, or children of God, or inheritors of the kingdom. As I've explained, knowing something and experiencing it are two different things. And your spirit longed to know itself experientially, just as I did. Conceptual awareness was not enough for you, so I devised a plan. It is the most extraordinary idea in all the universe and the most spectacular collaboration. I say collaboration because all of you are in it with me. Under the plan, you as pure spirit would enter the physical universe just created. This is because physicality is the only way to know experientially what you know conceptually. It is, in fact, the reason I created the physical cosmos to begin with and the system of relativity which governs it and all creation. Once in the physical universe, you, my spiritual children, could experience what you know of yourself. But first you had to come to know the opposite. You cannot know yourself as tall unless you become aware of short. Taken to ultimate logic, you cannot experience yourself as what you are until you have encountered what you are not. This is the purpose of the theory of relativity and all physical life. It is by that which you are not, that which you yourself are defined. Now in the case of the ultimate knowing, in the case of knowing yourself as the creator, you cannot experience yourself as creator unless and until you create. And you cannot create yourself until you uncreate yourself in a sense, you have to first not be in order to be. Of course, there is no way for you to not be who and what you are. 
You simply are that. Pure, creative spirit. You have been always that and always will be. So you did the next best thing. You have caused yourself to forget who you really are. Upon entering the physical universe, you relinquished your remembrance of yourself. This allows you to choose to be who you are rather than simply wake up in the castle, so to speak. It is in the act of choosing to be rather than simply being told that you are a part of God. So you experience yourself as being at total choice, which is what by definition God is. You are, have always been, and always will be a divine part of the divine whole, a member of the body. That is why the act of rejoining the whole of returning to God is called remembrance. You actually choose to remember who you really are or to join together with the various parts of you to experience the all of you, which is to say the all of me. So your job on earth, therefore, is not to learn, but to remember who you are and to remember who everyone else is. That is why a big part of your job is to remind others so that they can remember also. This is your sole purpose. That is to say the purpose of your soul. I do not show my love by creating only what you call perfection all around you. I do not demonstrate my love by not allowing you to demonstrate yours. And you cannot demonstrate love until you demonstrate not loving. A thing cannot exist without its opposite, except in the world of absolute. Yet the realm of the absolute was not sufficient for you and me. I existed there in the always. And it is from where you too have come. In the absolute, there is no experience, only knowing. Knowing. 